Hello, I'm FGX, Toy Cat, and if there was any doubt remaining about whether Mojang cared about the community's feedback on 1.17, that doubt has been removed in the last week because we've seen a brand new snapshot bringing in cheaper copper, fixing the key concern people had there, also making the spy glass feel more Minecrafty. We've alongside that seen a brand new beta, fixing some key settings on the bedrock version of the game, and at the same time as that, we've seen how stalactites can kill people, and we've finally seen a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel regarding the goat horn and its perceived uselessness as well. I'm very excited to talk about all these things and more in today's update news video. I hope you all enjoy it, but let's get straight into it. And I know it's always funny when YouTubers say let's get straight into it, but they say that 30 to 40 seconds into their video. But let's really do that today because a brand new snapshot came out this week and you probably didn't hear too much about it because there was really only one brand new feature and that brand new feature was Powdered Snow, which you'll recognize if you've been paying attention to the Bedrock Betas because Powdered Snow is one of the brand new features which came in the first Caves and Cliffs beta over there. So Powdered Snow made its way to Java and uh, although uh, it's kind of the same feature with the same leather boots stopping it from freezing entirely. It is also interesting to see they took it a step further and they made it so if you leave a cauldron outside while it's snowing, i.e. not raining the snow type of weather, um, it will fill with powdered snow. So there's another fun little uh, way we're moving this forwards. I love to see this, you know, Java and Bedrock both working on the same feature, but both kind of having different ideas on how to move that forwards. And uh, yeah, that's what powdered snow has happened with. Also in this same, uh, you know, update, you might have missed it, but they did change quite a lot of the textures in this update and a lot of those are kind of subtle and slight, but the biggest one you'll notice is the fact that the telescope has in fact changed. The spyglass, uh, when you zoom in, it now has a much more Minecraft, you could say, because it's square and Minecraft is a game of squares. Um, it's, it's got a very different uh, new kind of interface, and I like that. I don't think it's fixed the fundamental issue with the spyglass being pointless, but I think it's a cute change, and I think all of the texture changes are good. But the much better change, in my opinion, is the one-two copper prices. When you make copper recipes, uh, it used to be wildly expensive. It used to cost you nine copper ore, and you know, there's no enchantment to fix that, but it used to cost nine copper ore to make a single copper block. It was really ridiculous because you'd need 36 just to make a few off the cut copper blocks. But here is a announcement about how much they've reduced them by. Um, this graphic was made by Seacliff on Reddit, so big credit to this. Um, I really like this visualization because you can see that now it costs just four copper ingots if you want to make a copper block, which means if you want to make a cut copper block, um, it's a effectively four, even though you need four of those together. It's, it's still great you can do that. The same thing is true with the slab where you need more than three copper ore, but once you have a lot of them, to make six slabs, you need just three copper effectively. For every copper ore block you're mining, you're getting about half a slab. And if you have six copper ore, you can get four stairs. There's no real improvement about that. That still means 1.5 copper ore for every stair that you want. It's pretty darn expensive, especially as you can see in the second part of the graphic, a copper roof, this nice little thing you see on the left here, would cost this amount of copper copper ore, 679. Jesus, it's still so expensive to make a roof, but it's it's cheaper than it was before. I mean, uh, is it is it entirely better? I would say no, but I mean, at least it's not thousands of ore, it's just hundreds. I mean, I guess that's an improvement. And as long as, uh, again, there's some enchantment for mining it, or it just spawns in such a frequent level, or if we just want it to be a high, uh, you know, uh, you know, skill block, like one that's kind of showing off, then copper is kind of fine, but it's still insane to look at just this one roof and to see that it costs that amount of copper. But that's where we're at right now after the reduction. It's it's crazy to see, but I like that they've listened. I like that they fixed it at least a little bit because even now it's one of the more expensive things if you want to make a roof out of it. Um, so it shows just how ridiculous we were at before. And I'm really glad that Mojang took some community feedback on that one because it really, really does need it. However, it's it's not the only update that came out this week. There was a brand new uh, snapshot, which we've been speaking about, that is for Java. And there is a brand new beta, which if you don't know, refers to Bedrock usually. And that brand new beta isn't the most exciting thing. I mean, there's actually been a couple of them. One is just bug fixes. And the other one was mostly bug fixes, but it has a feature from Java that I think is so essential. And that is more advanced sound options. So now, as well as just having uh, sound and having music, you can separate them as much as you like. You can have your sound, you can have your environmental sounds, your block sounds, your hostile creatures sounds, your friendly creature sounds, your players, your jukebox, your note blocks, your, uh, you know, your weather, all of that can be separately controlled, which is essential. One of the uh, mistakes I made for my first snapshot video was, for whatever reason, chickens are insanely loud and they were entirely hearable during my entire video. I know I'm in America, my audio has some issues anyway, but those chickens were like killing me as I was editing that snapshot video. And uh, the fact that I can just turn friendly creatures way down and not deal with, gah, 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 
cock and you know whatever whatever chicken sound is uh, you know what? I my chicken impression is not good but you know what is good the brand new sound menu you have in the bedrock uh, beta and uh, it's also interesting to see that there's like a, a 1.16.100 update coming out uh, there's a 1.16.200 update they're working on which is the snapshots it's confusing but it's good to see that the bedrock world is moving forwards but it's not the only news we have I know like three updates in the span of a week it seems like some pretty big Minecraft news but when you come to this channel you know that we don't just have that we have everything here so allow me to show you something Henrik Nieberg tweeted out so he is the one working on the new caves and he showed off this video of the brand new stalactite caves Okay, so many interesting things to talk about. First of all is the fact that you cannot use pistons to push stalactites, or you can, but uh, obviously anything below that will fall out entirely. Second of all, the damage these stalactites are doing. You can see how that's only seven blocks above him. Uh, it's actually five from the very uh, point of fear, um, but still it is enough to kill him. Stalactites are genuinely deadly. This cave right here, look how many stalactites are in there. All of those have the opportunity to kill them, uh, kill you, and also maybe jumping onto the ones below you might give the same effect. These might actually actually be a super deadly cave because you know, if you combine this with like a creeper exploding or being hit by a skeleton on something, um, or even just naturally the things falling, there could be some serious risks in these caves. And I like that. We've got a actually dangerous type of cave. Also, if you look at this cave, um, you know, type right here, it's a very small version of the stalactite caves, the dripstone caves compared to what we've seen before. And I actually kind of like it in that form. Also, just as a final thing, I know we could have spotted this in the trailers, but you can see there's the blocks all around, uh, a brand new block made of the same material as stalactites. If you look around, you'll find a bunch of it and it's very fascinating to see, to say the least. However, it's not the last of the news because this is a mega news video. Uh, you think the news ends there? You better believe you're mistaken because uh, you know how I hinted at the goat horn thing earlier? Well, that came because I was streaming on Twitch. If you don't know, I do most of my streaming on YouTube, but I decided to do just one Twitch stream just to test the water. Uh, and uh, while I was there, old Raph MC came along, the uh, actual official one. You can verify his name if you want to. Um, and this was super fascinating because he said hello. Uh, oh, Raph. Hey, Toy Cat VIVX. Oh, it's good to see you. Oh, Raph. <laughs> Hello. I, uh, I'm i new to Twitch streaming. I'm very unfamiliar with all of this. But uh, yeah, it's good to see you, oh, Raph. Uh, it's it's so cool to uh, to speak directly uh, to, to Mojang people. We then had a little conversation where he actually said that he was watching my YouTube videos before he became a Mojang staff member, which I thought was like crazy. That like blew my mind. Uh, yeah, again, like Toy Cat appearing in the Minecraft universe, uh, the MCU, if you will, um, was something kind of incredible. Lord dude, I've been watching your videos since before I became a developer. That's so cool that you're excited about the things I have to say. I'm just a Minecraft nerd who watches way too many Minecraft videos. <laughs> See, that, I, I love that you're, you're basically saying it's like the same in reverse, if you don't mind me interpreting it that way. But then it gets even weirder. Hey, glad you liked it. Wait, okay, official confirmation right here live on a live stream. That's real old ref. Glad you liked it. There is still more to uh, come regarding the horn. Because all Raph starts responding to a few people in chat, and he responds in particular with something super fascinating you can see right here, uh, where uh, Enderboss25, uh, you know, like asked something about the goat horn, and the response that all Raph gave was, glad you liked it. There is still more to come regarding the horn later. And then there's a winking face. I don't know what's wrong with Twitch emojis. I don't use Twitch. I, I don't understand why that's the thing. But you can see how, ha ha, there's a... There's a, there's a winking face and a goat horn. I mean, obviously, we can take winking faces to mean a lot of things. I mean, that is what we do as a generation, am I right? But uh, you can also tell in this particular case that there's clearly something planned for the goat horn. Right now, the goat as a whole mob is kind of useless, uh, hinging on whether they can do a real thing with that goat horn, and it seems like they might just be able to pull something out of the bag. I am very curious about this mystery of the goat horn, because right now it's a sound. Right now it's a weird drop that you can get from a mob in a very weird way compared to other mobs, but it doesn't have a use that makes it definingly worth finding goats, that makes you want to find goats, but maybe they, it looks like they know that, and it looks like they have a plan to fix that, and boy, am I excited. I don't know, it feels like with many other updates, they're like, oh yeah, we've got this master plan, and that master plan involves dolphins being next to useless. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
that master plan involves uh, you know some super weird and quirky behavior that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited about the real direct feedback we see from you know Mojang listening to the community. I mean, from the fact that we have people like Jappa like regularly talking about the art of things. Uh, he was talking about like uh, some of the new texture changes he made, uh, you know, old versus new, side by side of the amethyst, for example. He was talking about how the candles. Uh, you know, show two uh, on them to like kind of hint that there should be two candles, but he thinks maybe it should be one. I think getting a community beyond these things is important because one of the, uh, you know, the huge aspects of Minecraft that is really under, criminally underutilized is its community. There are more than a hundred million people playing Minecraft every month and having that size of a community for a game is such a shame to just see, you know, being wasted as we've uh, potentially seen before. Uh, it's great that they're, you know, even if, uh, you know, it's just they're being more open about it. It's great to see it on our side. Uh, and this goes everything from the developers tweeting out about uh, their stuff. You know, the Henrik Niebergs talking about how a fun new death message for the stalactite or the new texture changes or seeing potentially a use for the goat horn or you know, the, just the brand new beta features that we've seen. But it extends beyond even that because the Feedback Minecraft site has a specific caves and cliffs area. They're not just going to say, oh yeah, we're working on that so you can't talk about it. No, there is a whole section where you can uh, you know, give your ideas for the caves and cliffs update. Um, so please do add that into there. There's a trillion different different cave update ideas that I've spoken about in so many videos in the past. Um, but this update isn't about me. It's not about Mojang. It's about what people want from the update. And it's about delivering the best 1.17 we can. And I love to see it happen. Uh, and I'm very excited about that. Um, let me know if you'd like to see me go through all of the most upvoted posts on the uh, Caves and Cliffs idea to like, get a feel for what the developers think the community wants. I think that would be fascinating, but maybe that's just my own bias and loving to read through feedback. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.